Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House for the 2023 season. And on this week's show, we talk premature Holbrook elation from our Warrington friends, players departing the club, our trip to Salford, and a couple of events coming up over the next week. Joined by I, my good friend Peter this evening. Peter, how are you? Yes, good evening, Dave. Thanks for uh, having me on again. Uh, always a, a pleasure to join you for a, a pre-match or post-match uh, chat. Looking forward to an exciting weekend of uh, sport, not just rugby league. Uh, so plenty to keep us interested. And uh, a tough game on Sunday, without any doubt, especially where, as we'll see in the squad, Salford Evans are a few bodies back, unhelpfully. But, um, you know... Uh, it's it's not an insurmountable uh, task, I'd have to say. Not for this Saints squad. Um, we will start off by the news of the week or the non-news of the week. Our good friend, <laughs> Justin Holbrook, Saints legend. He was <laughs> never going to Warrington, even if he uh, pretended for a little while that he'd have a little flirt with them. He just wanted to see what money was on offer before using his agent to get the NRL deal that he wanted. I think that's pretty much the case. I mean, when the reason he left Saints was uh, he wanted to uh, to go back home to Australia with his family, to be with obviously the extended family. Um, he'd done his time over here. He certainly wasn't going to come back uh, to go to with with all respect to them uh, to Warrington. He, he, I don't think he's not, he would do with them as he managed to do with Saints. Um, Saints were a bigger mess when he came to us, but. Where they though, Peter? And they, and do you know what? This is a debate that um, I've had with Kev a little bit. Mm. In terms of Justin Holbrook, do we romanticise how good he actually was because of the how bad we were under Kieran, um, and and because of the turnaround was so quick and dramatic? Because I would also <clears throat> argue that we were better under Christian Wolf. I think um, if you look at obviously the records in terms of trophies lifted. I think we were better under Christian Wolf. There's no doubt about it. I think, and you, you'll never get be able to do this comparison, is how Christian Wolf would have failed to take over from Kieran Cunningham. Um, yeah. That's probably the only way you can accurately look at it. But I think uh, certainly Christian came in with a better squad and a better feeling within the club than when Justin arrived. So I think the jobs aren't well like for like. I think when Justin took over, it wasn't an immediate success. I mean, obviously we got that we had the big win against Hull at Magic up in Newcastle, but it took a while for. And I think I mentioned it in one of the uh, uh, instant fan reactions when I was down for a game against. I'm sure it was Lee at the end of May that year. That the players were still getting uh, taking time to get out of the grind mentality that Kieran had kind of installed in them as to how the. They, they were approaching the game, you know, not looking to score early on, just almost bore their opponent into submission. But once he got that, once he got over that, you know, we were, you know, 40 seconds away from the grand final that year. Um, and then obviously the year after, Ben Barber came in and we were a wonderful team, but we got the reputation as, you know, chokers. But when he left, the, 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 the situation he left is in, you know, we were almost the invincibles. You know, with the wonderful squad, wonderful record, and Christian obviously took over in a much more advantageous position. Um, Justin did a great job because it was a big rebuild. Um, we've seen some great rugby, and as I say, he was never going to come back. I don't think he wanted to do that again. Uh, yeah, you know, with a Peter, team. obviously he went over to Gold Coast. He actually improved the Titans. Was unlucky to lose his job. Um, mm. The dirty was done behind his back. He's still in demand in Australia. His name's still being spoken to, uh, spoken about for head coach jobs that will arise in the future. You almost feel that coming over to Warrington would be career suicide unless you suddenly turn that Warrington squad into championship winners. Which I'm sorry, he doesn't walk. He might be a great coach, but he doesn't walk on water. So <laughs> if he has any aspirations of coaching in the NRL again. It's career suicide going to Warrington. You may as well sit in the NRL, live in Sydney, as he's going to be doing with the Sydney Roosters, being an assistant coach, ready to to pounce on any NRL job that comes up. And then, listen, if potentially down the line, families get older, big clubs like Saints or Wigan or Leeds 
might come back in and he, and he might fancy coming back over here. But you're not going to go to a tin pot Lego stadium like <laughs> Warrington have got and try and coax that hot mess that, that is there because that's an impossible job. Well, it's, it's certainly an impossible impossible job. Although anyone taking over now obviously has the caveat that you know they're taking over the clubs in a bit of a mess and anything that they do have, even if they move them up a couple of places, they get all the credit. If they don't do anything more this season, well, it was it was all Daryl Powell's fault. Um, but it's still a, a poison chalice. I think is probably the best expression. Um, and at the end of the day, you can have Daryl Powell there. You know, you can have uh, Craig Bellamy there if you've still got the same players as Daryl Powell has called out several occasions, who don't have the heart, don't have the fight uh, for the battle. And, you know, when the chips are down, they go hiding. It doesn't matter who your coach is. If the players don't have the right mentality, if the culture at the club's all wrong, you're not going to succeed regardless of who's in the manager's chair. The one thing I can't believe, Peter, is that I pay money to Sky TV for a, a, a TV subscription, a sports subscription, to watch Super League, and they are employing pundits like Phil Clark, who has given me <laughs> hot takes that Warrington's chances of reaching the grand final are resting on how they fare against Catalan. Um, if they win, they go in the grand final. If they lose, they're not. Really? How is that man well, picking up? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, I I was watching their, their game against the Leeds um, last week, you know, primarily on the edge of my seat through my fingers. Um, it was quite quite a nervous game. We'll probably come to that, but um, they were almost. And he, he wasn't alone, Clarky, last week. But you know, almost cheerleading for Leeds at some point, and almost like coaching the place. I like you know, move it left, move it left. You know, not sort of like saying, "Well, if they go left now, they're in with a good chance." It was like he was encouraging them as if he was sitting in the stand or standing in the terraces with the the Rhinos fans, that the ones that bothered to make the journey, of course, that is. But um, you know, it's, does it almost feel? That because there's decent pundits coming through, Kev Brown, Kyle Amor, John Wilkin, etc., that he can't do that any or nah, did he ever do that? But now no. he just wants to play like a caricature. Well, I think he's got to try and keep himself relevant, keep himself in the news, and if people are talking about him, um, then perhaps that that makes them think you know they'll, they'll still employ him. But you look at what um, Sky Sports did with like the, some of the guys that were on. Uh, like Soccer Saturday for years. Yeah. They they bend them off because they've been there for too long, less relevant. And I think you mentioned guys like, obviously, Wilco and Kyle were, you know, we are obviously biased about because they, they were great for Saints and stuff and affinity. But Kev Brown, you know, he, he's he's worth a listen. He's really, really good. Um, You know, and I think of some, some of the ones that are on, on Channel 4 as well. Even, even Sam Tompkins talk, talks a really good game when he's <laughs> as a pundit as well. well. You know, I think um, you know. I think you know. You need to look at uh, getting some new blood. People who've played the game more recently, and their opinions and what's happening, and their view on the game is more up to date. So, I mean, Phil Clark had his time, but I think now, as you see, becoming a caricature and some of the stuff last week, it was actually bordering on embarrassing as to how pro Leeds he was. Now, that's not me being paranoid. Anyone watch the recording back, you'll see what I mean. It's uh, it was almost. Shouting them on. Some of the uh, the takes are if it, are, are the rugby league equivalent of probably some of the stuff, mad stuff that Matt Letizia comes out with. But there we go. We'll move swiftly on from that one. Uh, one player departing the club this week, Peter, is young hooker Taylor Pemberton. He is joining York City Knights on loan until the end of the season, and. Um, also, the end of his St. Helens contract. Um, from all accounts, there is no offer on the table for him to remain at the club in 2024. Um, so it's probably a good move for Taylor. A uh, chance for him to, to play some first-team rugby and either try and win a permanent contract at York or put himself in the shop window uh, for a move to a Super League club. Um, and I'm sure yeah. there are some Super League clubs who would be interested in a hooker such as Taylor, who's come through the Saints system. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough coming through um, the Saints Academy, especially in, uh, as a young hooker. Um, you know, the legacy of uh, James Roby, everyone's compared to him. You've seen that with Aaron Smith uh, a few years ago. He came through and he played a lot of games and he played well for a while. 
but it's difficult to kind of keep up that standard. And everyone says, oh, he's not as good as Roby, you know, and before that it was, oh, he's not as good as Cunningham and all the rest of it. So it's very, very difficult and not everyone, as I say, comes through the academy and makes it out of the, same, the Saints' first team. doesn't mean they're not good players. It means, you know, they might get a chance elsewhere, obviously like Taylor, and I hope he has a, a good spell at York and gets himself a, a good move for next season. Um, you know, not everyone's a Super League-level player. Uh, he might find a home at the top end of the Championship, for example, and make his way into Super League that way, maybe the longer route. But uh, any time I've, I've seen him play in some of the kind of reserves or academy games, he's looked a, a bright, buzzing young uh, hooker so hopefully he gets his opportunity and, and go on, can go on to have a, a really good career I I think he'd be a pretty decent signing for maybe the likes of Salford, Huddersfield, Hull potentially Warrington um, because they're not going to have a decent hooker at the club next season are they? <laughs> well they're, they're <laughs> probably their best hookers coming to us but uh, um, I mean who knows I mean, if, if he has a good spell someone might uh, notice him um, and you know, get, take him, take the opportunity to, you know, take a punt on him. But uh, it's difficult, even at his age. He's not, he's not by any manner of means old. But if they haven't broken into the team by twenty twenty one, then perhaps there's a, a 17, 18 year old guy behind you that's ready to be the, the, well, the first choice. Funny enough, funny enough, Peter. It looks like um, I think it's Jake Burns has took um, Taylor's. Uh, Place in the twenty-one man squad uh, yeah. may well be third choice hooker next season. He's actually already twenty-three. Um, well, that's yeah, that's that's. It, I don't realise he was as old as that. To be honest, potentially lot, you've just got now with the reserve system, you've got to have certain players. You've got a bit of know-how at that level as well to help bring young players on. And obviously, if Jake is going to be available at the right price under the salary cap, um and can do a job, then that might be what earns him his place in that squad next season. And of course, um, you know, he's 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 much younger in comparison to um Daryl Clark and Moses and Bai. Um and James Roby. And and Roby obviously but obviously looking ahead to next season, um when he's that when he went with third choice um you know for the whole season, he might uh, think well some of these guys might need rested, they might pick up injuries and then he perhaps gets the opportunity and Sometimes, as a young player, you know, you only need an opportunity. You get thrown in, or you know, if he plays well enough, he might get his opportunity. You think back years ago when Josh Jones made his debut at um, Warrington, like guys like myself, maybe you know, Saints fans at, at that time, it didn't see a lot of the kind of academy, the youngsters. I think who's this young guy? And he came in that night and he played, he played a great game. And you know, he was to the manner born as if he played in the first team all his life. Um, and perhaps Jake might get that opportunity either this season or into next season. And you know, you never know. Any more injuries, Peter? He may well do. And that brings us on to this week's squad. The news doesn't get a lot better. Um, Conrad Harrell is dropping out of the squad. He's going to be missing for the next four weeks due to a, um, a, a pulled calf. Um, obviously, Taylor Pemberton out on loan to York, which means Curtis Sirenin returns to the squad, as does someone else, Jake Burns, who we've just talked about. Yeah. It's a yeah. 21-man squad. See, I'm not as proficient as this as Kev is. Um, the other good news, Tommy Makinson um, is still fit, as is. Mark Percival, who has passed his HIA um, assessment with the neuro specialist this week, and it's probably going to be a like for like replacement for Percy straight back in. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a shame. I think Conrad, he's, he looks as if he'd been playing with an injury for a few weeks, so perhaps this four week break will give him the opportunity to, to, to kind of rest up, get the injuries dealt with, and come back for the business end of the season. Um, and he can he can come back in fit and firing. Because I don't think he's looked himself the last few weeks just because of those injuries. So if he can get rested up, come back, you know, like his old self, you know, when we get to perhaps uh, Lee or Warrington onwards, I think, you know, we, we get these guys back. You obviously, Cyril's perhaps in this week, then you've got Batch, uh, Louis, uh, and uh, yeah, I think there's another couple possibly back next week as well. Sione as well, we'll finish up his ban. You know, you're, you're starting to get players back. Touch wood um, at the right end of the season. As long as we don't start losing anymore, if we can keep our heads in terms of discipline, if we get these players back. Perhaps we might find that 
getting players fit and ready at the end of the season um, might do us a great turn in terms of... I mean, I don't think second place is out of the equation. Not, not at all. Um, it looks like Catalan have probably got top spot sewn up, but I think it's either us or Wigan for runners-up place. And if we can pick them to that, then, you know, five in a row is absolutely on. I think second place has got to be the aim. Uh, anything less than that, and I think would would be in a would be in a tricky spot. Not impossible, but that's the aim, and it's it's there if we can get guys back, get bodies fit at the right end of the uh, right right part of the season. Then we are in a really good, I think, strong position to to um, to to annoy supporters of all other teams, annoy the media by winning Super League again. You almost feel for Catalan that if they're going to do it, this is going to be their year. They've obviously got quite a few players moving on at the end of the season. At the moment, yeah. they're looking like the dominant side. I think mm-hmm. the important thing is not finish... If they're going to finish top, that you don't finish fourth and have to go to Catalan in the playoffs. Yes, I think that's, that is that is uh, crucially important because uh, if you think it's tough going to Perpignan, you know, for a, a league game, um, there, there being crowd at the best of times is difficult for the match officials and the opposition to deal with in a, a semi-final then I think it would be really, really tough. Although Leeds went there last year and did it, um, the B the Bayern crowd kind of like got in, got their on the wrong side of the ref, and as did their discipline. But um, I think it's it's well within Saints' capabilities. Um, we obviously have to go on a very good run. I don't think I think we could afford to lose one more game maximum if we want to finish second or third. I think that's whether that's realistic or not. I don't know, but. I think given where we are, I think that's the most that we could get away with losing. Um, so a home se- listen, a home semi final, I'll be I'll, I will be absolutely elated with that. Yeah, but, and it, it's absolutely within our grasp. It really is. Obviously, Salford away at the weekend, then Hull KR at home, Cass away, Wakefield away. You'd be hoping to win both of them. Lee at yeah. home, Warrington away, Hull FC at home. On paper. Yeah. They're all winnable games, but unfortunately, yeah. rugby league isn't played on paper. It's That's played true. on grass, and I think if if rugby league was played on paper, we probably would be unbeaten. Absolutely. Obviously, we'll get the Huddersfield game next week as well. Ah, yes. Sunday. Sunday, so Sunday back, rugby, five pm. Yes, they're they're back in a bit of form. They're um, a couple of wins in the bounce, and they seem to be. Uh, um, I'm not giving the game away, but they're 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 uh, in front tonight over at Cast. But then again, that doesn't seem like much of a challenge these days. Um, but they've got they've they've got to go there and do that. They're um having a bit of a revival. That I don't think that'll be easy. Um, but you know, one game one game at a time, as they say. We've got to take care of what is a very very difficult game. Um, on Sunday, we remember last year we went there and they absolutely tore us apart. Probably one of their best performances. Of the the season, they played some fantastic rugby. To give them full credit, in beautiful conditions, Brody Croft ran a mock. Um, but uh, you know, if we go there and show the same steel and resilience as we did last week, and we played a bit more rugby last week as well, it wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But if we show the same resolve, and defensive, and character, and 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 fight and heart, then we could certainly eke out a victory. Yeah, it's obviously it's a ground we've not won on since 2019. Um, yeah. Who are the four that miss out for you, Peter? Um, Matty Foster, Wes mm-hmm. Bruins, Jake Burns, and then uh, one of Sam Royal and all Lewis Baxter? Well, if we if Cyril is fit, then it's probably unfortunate for him, Lewis Baxter, because obviously Sam started last week and put in a put in a good shift. Um, so I, I, I don't think he'd drop out. Um, so if Cyril's fit, he can then probably... Sam drops to the bench and it's uh, unfortunately uh, Lewis Baxter that misses out but he did nothing wrong last week um, and I want to um, especially because I'm going to be yourself Dave give big raps to uh, Dan Norman who I thought went well last week not big minutes but he did, did a good enough job he's been out the team for a while not played uh, not played a lot of minutes anywhere and I think he, he did a decent job last week because it was a he was in a hiding to nothing um, coming in with so many forwards missing, so fair play to him and Sammy Royal did a great job last week, um, and hopefully they'll go well again this week. Absolutely, uh, the only way is up. 
Salford squad. Um, just looking at the squad numbers, it's as about as strong as you can get. Uh, we were we were kind of like open that a few more players got sold today, but uh, <laughs> the rumours aren't true. Paul Rowley is still in charge, and the Salford squad is intact. Mark Sneed, Callum Watkins coming back in this week. King Vuna Yaya Yawa, I said that right. Close um, enough. We can play this week um, after yeah. not being allowed into France last week because of a mess with his passport. <laughs> um, it's a strong squad, but it just feels uh-huh. like why have the wheels come off the last few weeks? Well, yeah, they had, they've had a few bodies missing the last few weeks. Um, and, you know, <laughs> Salford are one of these strange teams. If they click, then they, at times they can beat anyone. They could be almost unplayable, as we saw last year. Um, but the game at Saints, the first half, they scored a couple of great tries. Uh, um, they were the better team. Second half, they came out. They went. They made a lot of errors. Put under pressure by Saints, I have to say. And they just fell apart and we ended up winning very comfortably. Um, so, you don't know what Salford are going to turn up. But, I mean, you look at that squad, um, there's a lot of a lot of game breakers there. Um, obviously, Brody Croft gets all the... Uh, all the praise, all the credit, but you look at let's say the Lafay Burgess partnership on the left. That's that's strong. Seal scores a lot of tries. Ryan Briarly from fullback, you know, cuts some great angled runs and you you know gets in the end of a lot of Brody Croft's work. Um, even Andy Ackers, I think, is a great hooker. Um, I know I'm talking them up here, uh, but you know I've got to be got to be honest and give them the credit that they're due. It's going to be a very very tough ask for us and. Uh, Sunday, as you rightly say, we've not won there in a few years, so perhaps we're long overdue coming back from the, the AJ Bell with a couple of points in our back pocket. Absolutely. Uh, Salford, another team who are celebrating their 150th anniversary this year. Um, Saints Community Foundation and all the great work that they do uh, with the, the, the cheerleading and the dancers, uh, they'll be doing a special performance at halftime with the Red Devils dance team. Um so Saints and Salford getting together to to put a piece on. I think I think it'll be reciprocated uh, at some point at Saints. Um, so yeah, that's half time. Two years ago today, Peter, this beautiful young man signed for Saints. Not De- not Derek Trainer, not Derek, no. And George Delaney as well. <laughs> Yes, I only say that because uh, uh, I know I know Derek very well. In fact, it was his. It's his. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you before, but I'll tell everybody as well. It's Derek's older brother Keith is my wife Sharon's uncle through marrying his mum's her mum's sister. So that's the link. So I've known Derek for many many years. I'm not even going to try and work out that family tree. I I was quite it's quite simple when you think about it. Um, but uh, I remember when he had dark hair. And a, and a bit more of it as well. So, uh, but what? Even though I, I you know, I'm, I'm kind of kidding him on there. What a great job he's done in the academy. Um, you know, finding talent, bringing it through. The the conveyor belt of top quality players um, is is incredible. And I think you look at that's the difference between clubs like Saints and you mentioned Warrington. Um, obviously Warrington have got a couple of young players, but you look at most of this any success or relative success they've had is by bringing in overseas players, whereas the clubs that ge- generally go well consistently are the ones where, you know, the, a, a good young players coming through the academy, you know, on a consistent basis. Uh, and, you know, full credit to Derek and his team there uh, for bringing through guys like um, George, who's, who's taken the first team rugby like a duck to water. I mean, he's no respect to their reputations, no concern about his own uh, welfare. He just throws himself into everything, um, and has, has, has had a great impact so far. So, more more power to him. Here's to many more great appearances and some more young guys making it through Derek's academy in the, the coming years. Absolutely. A couple more events taking place next week during the summer holidays. It is the members' open day next Wednesday, twelve till four pm. Open training session on the pitch at one. And then the players will head over to the North Stand for photos and autographs. There's going to be inflatables. A well, the Welcome Challenge trophy is on display for photos. Concourse activities, including a silent disco. It's going to be like being at Wigan. 
and food and drink kiosks are open. Um, obviously, free for members. If you're a non-member, it is £2 and you can get tickets on the club website. Um, already over 800 sold. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting dragged along. Oh, yeah, because you, you wouldn't want to go and um, uh, have a wee shot in the inflatables. I can just I can just picture you and Kev jumping about in the bouncy castle. Yes. <laughs> Wall up somebody over the head with one of them big mallets. Um, <laughs> and lastly, the Saints Community Development Foundation continuing their great work. They are hosting uh, an LDRL festival this weekend. It takes place at Fatal Heath Crusaders sun on Sunday, uh, 11.45 a.m. till 1.45. So if you're not going to Castleford, go and watch the whole thing. If Castleford? If you're going to Salford, um, <laughs> if you're not going, get along there. If you are going, you can do an hour and then still get to Salford on time. Um, obviously, yeah. the Saints LDRL team will be taking part in a 12-team tournament with Wigan, Warrington, Witness, Lee and a few others as well. Um, yeah. Great work that they put on, um, and I believe one of the 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 lads who has been part of the LDRL team since the start, Kev Thompson, hasn't been well lately. Um, so best wishes and get well soon to him. Um, Absolutely, hey, that is the news for the week. Care, thank you. That is the news for the week, yeah. Peter. Yeah, there's been quite quite a bit, uh, quite a bit going on, and. Uh... Oh, it's getting to that time of the season where there's some stuff happening every day. There'll be even more, um, you know, new player announcements. At, at not just the Saints, but at various other clubs. Players leaving, new bodies coming in. You know what players are injured, what players are suspended. Because obviously now we're getting into the business end of the season, and every every minute matters. I think yeah, was the was the, the slogan for the league a couple we've of years. Moved, ago. We've had about five but, different rebrands since then, Peter. Yeah, I know. But um, I mean, as as I said. Um, I think we can afford at the most one more defeat in the next uh, nine games. I think it is, um, which you know eight wins out of nine. It's like Warrington's form in reverse, um, but we need to, you know, with that if we want to finish second, I think that's what we need to do because I don't think Wigan will lose too many games. Lee, I think, obviously before and after the cup final, are going to kind of struggle. Warrington, I think, are. Um, you know, I don't, they might get a bounce at some point, but I think, you know, they might kind of drop off. So I think it's us or the Wigan only, for second. The only positive if, positive is both Wigan and Lee have to play um, Catalan still. So well, there, will yeah, be some, think... there will be some drop points, but Catalan look like for me, they're going to be out of sight at the top. Yeah, I think so. And I think um, you mentioned earlier this could be their year. I was I was thinking at that stage, that, that's someone else's catchphrase. But I think for them, it genuinely, genuinely could be. Because Catalan, in the past, have always been a big, big physical side. But they've not always had like the pace and the, the kind of guile out wide. But they seem to have the full package this year. When you look at somebody like Tom Johnson, what a sign in that is. I'd have, I'd have loved it if we could have got Tom Johnson. No, no disrespect to any other of our wingers, but can you imagine Saints this year with Tom Johnson? Goodness me, what a signing that boy was. Um, and, I, and I think, obviously, they're losing a couple next year. Obviously, they're losing Adam Kieran, um, Catalan, but they've still they've got Ike Valu, they've got They've still got a hell of a lot of good players. A few Matt guys, Whitley but, will be a big loss for them as well. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I think, obviously, a few of the older, <laughs> a few of the older boys will be... Like um, like Sam Tompkins, um, Macalorum might be their last, their last dance, as it were, and I think that might make them even more keen to end their association with, you know, with a a big trophy, their biggest trophy, I suppose, complete the complete the Catalan set. You know, they're the league leaders. They won a Challenge Cup. You know, they want to win Super League because that would, I suppose, complete their um their kind of transformation from coming in. And two thousand and six, wasn't it? And then to you know, as a, a first of a new team to then you know winning everything, and it wouldn't put it past them. And if Saints aren't to win it this year, you think, yeah, let's you know let's have Catalan winning it, a new name in the trophy. But I still put my neck in the line here, and bookmark this Catalan Saints final, and it's going yeah, to happen. Hopefully so. Right, all done and dusted. Thank you for joining us on this Friday evening, Peter. Uh, don't My forget pleasure. to like share and subscribe and we'll catch you for the instant reaction 
at the AJ Bell Stadium, hopefully following a Saints win on Sunday. Catch you soon.